Hey guys, Meteor Rebel Chris Tomer here with this Thursday mountain weather update. It was another spectacular sunrise here across Colorado and just enough of that wave cloudy to stack like a canvas this morning to bounce some of that morning light off. And this is the view from Loveland where it's also very windy this morning over the Continental Divide. Wind gusts are blowing like 50, 60, 70, even 80 miles an hour. You can see some of the plumes off the high peaks in the distance it's it's a pretty dry stretch for colorado utah ahead I'll, I'll show you what i'm thinking but um let me just go to radar and it is just high and dry across the lower 48. the main storm track through the 23rd is going to favor the pacific northwest and bc where we have a storm system right now the problem over the last couple of days has been a high rain snow line closer look at that here in just a second out of the northeast some light snows moving through up there um i don't have anything major for the Northeast um, through Christmas, unfortunately, just light snow accumulations. Um, I'll break that forecast down here in a second, but here's the West. Okay, here is the water vapor satellite imagery. So oranges and reds, drier air aloft, moistures in the whites and the blues. Here's our storm system cranking and pumping all that warm air and moisture up through the Pacific Northwest and parts of BC. Behind its storm system, another one behind it. There's one spinning up here in the Gulf of Alaska. So there's a lot of activity, but the question is, where are they going to go? All of these are rolling up to the Pacific Northwest in BC, and then eventually they cruise down into the Great Lakes. Uh, eventually, there's a Christmas Eve, Christmas Day storm that will come further to the south and will hit the Sierra squarely, Nevada, Utah, in Colorado, Wyoming, Idaho, 12-24, 12-25. So that's what's coming. In fact, you can kind of see it. When you look at the integrated vapor transport forecast, this is how we spot enhanced moisture for the atmosphere, atmospheric river setups. Um, you can see the spikes, weak, mod, weak to early entry level moderate contributions of IVT coming in for that San Francisco Bay Corridor, um, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So eventually that storm will pull the track to the south and bring in some new moisture. Okay, here are my bullet points. So storm track, like I said, favoring the Pacific Northwest BC, even Northern Idaho and parts of Montana through 1223. Um, between now and then, there's gonna be a high rain snow line. I'll look at some of the specifics for that next, but that also affects snow quality because it tends to be a heavier snow, a he uh, higher density type snow with more moisture content. Um, so you gotta be up much higher. If you're up higher on the highest cascades and the highest volcanoes, you don't have anything to worry about. I mean, it's gonna be snow, but. Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, the storm system is significant because it helps to pull the whole storm track further to the south. In the northeast, I don't have anything major. All right, let's drill down just a little bit here on the rain snow line today and tomorrow. For Whistler Blackcomb, it's about 5,000 feet today. So you got to be above that to get the best snow. Otherwise, you're risking rain snow. Mount Baker, it's really high. It's 7,000 feet or even higher at times today and tomorrow. Uh, Revel Stoke. 3,400 feet today, 4,000 tomorrow. So, and eventually they'll come down, but I mean, that's, that's definitely gonna affect things. You gotta be higher up. Here's my uh, snow timeline. Best odds of snow for the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, Interior BC in the Northeast. I mentioned Interior BC, and I've got several, several chances for snow with different storm systems. Light 19 today, light moderate, light to moderate tomorrow accumulations, light on 21, light 23, and then potentially moderate to heavy 24, 25, 26, and 27. All of those days could be a rich flow. Um, for example, in Colorado, I mentioned both the Colorado and the Wasatch uh, zones are going to be fairly dry. For example, in Colorado, only light on 1223 light on 1225, and then maybe light to moderate accumulations on 1227. In the Wasatch, it's light potentially moderate there by evening of 1224 to 25 and then light on afternoon evening 26. So I wish it was just something major. Let me, um, let's go specific here. Let's look at Brighton ski area. Um, this is the forecast mediagram at about 9,000 feet, 8161, 8961. Here's today's column, the 19th, there's tomorrow, Friday, there's Saturday and there's Sunday. So it's mainly dry at Brighton, solitude, Alta, Snowbird, but this does have snow coming in on Sunday the 22nd. You can see it start to accumulate in the morning, preceding that gusts of 25, maybe 30 miles an hour. Um, high temps today at 9,038. Tomorrow, 39. Uh, I'm looking at about 36 on Saturday and then a little bit colder on Sunday with that storm system coming in.
It's a pretty dry stretch. Um, here's the jet stream forecast, close of business. Uh, by the time we get to, let me start this up. Okay, here we are by 11.30 tonight. You can see the arcing of the jet to the north across the lower 48, warm and dry. Everything's up in the Pacific Northwest. All right, so by the time we get to Friday, there it is. I'm just going to let this thing run. Here's Saturday, there's Sunday. I'm, I'm going to wait until we get to our 1224 storm. Here it comes right there. So it moves through California 1223-24 with uh, some heavy snow potential. But I'll warn you, the rain snow line, when it arrives in Tahoe, is going to be pretty high. I mean, it could be 8,000 feet. Now here's 1224. Moves into Nevada, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and eventually Colorado right there. 1225, 26, another storm behind it. And there might even be an additional storm behind that. Okay, here is the forecast radar and the satellite. Let me stop this thing. Back it, back it up here. All right, so here we are. This is uh, this afternoon, this evening at about 5.30. All the actions way far to the north, Pacific Northwest BC. By Friday morning, same places. Friday afternoon, same thing. Now, each storm starts to go a little bit further to the south. Look at the one on 22-23. That one goes a little bit further to the south, sends some light snows into the interior, into the inner mountain, through some uh, places like Utah, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, and even Colorado, but it's in and it's out. Here comes the main storm system. This is 1224 in the morning. Here's 1224 in the afternoon, coming out of the Sierra, moving into the inner mountain Rockies, and then you're looking at snow. Through 1225, this is Christmas Day in the morning right here. And there's Christmas afternoon, snow in Colorado, northern New Mexico. That moves out. Next storm comes in behind it, 1226, 27. That appears to be a colder storm system with mainly snow. Here are my numbers. So all of today through tomorrow, there basically isn't anything in the lower 48. It's all up in the parts of B.C. and the Pacific Northwest, where, again, you may have a high rain snow line. This is 1221 through 1228. This accounts for at least a couple of different storm systems. So looking at 10 to 20 inches through the Sierra, um, this is mid-mountain and higher. You're going to have to be pretty high with some of these numbers. 6 to 10 for the Wasatch, 3 to 8 for a lot of Colorado. So not as big as yesterday's numbers when I was looking at these. So the trend is down just a little bit there. About a foot for the Tetons, 4 to 5, 3 to 4 to 5 up there in the parts of Montana. Pretty good numbers through Idaho, looking at 8 to 16 inches. And look at the numbers in the Pacific Northwest and parts of B.C. Um, I mean, look at Whistler and, and Baker, Crystal, Rainier. We could be looking at 3, 4, 5 feet of accumulation. Keep in mind, you're going to have to be higher up, otherwise you're going to be battling that rain-snow line. But some impressive moisture content up there. Interior BC, over a foot, 10 to 20 for parts of Red Mountain and Revelstoke, less in Fernie and less in Kicking Horse and even less as you run down into parts of Banff and Sunshine. In the Northeast, again, I don't have anything major. One to four inches is gonna do it through 1228. So it's a series of light snowfalls that add up to this one to four inches through Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and New York State. All right, guys, we're going to end on the grand total map, not the grand total map, but for this uh, this time period of the West here, 1221 through 1228, um, these totals, again, accounts for two, maybe even three storm systems. They are impressive in some areas. Just got to keep our fingers crossed. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.